My friend and fellow TED fellow, Boniface Mwangi from Kenya, says there are two most powerful days in your life, the day you were born and the day you discover why. Most of us know when we were born, but how many of us actually know why? I was born to study white flies in East Africa. <laughs> and I'm here today to tell you how I know that by putting the spotlight on the strongest people on the planet, the smallholder farmers in East Africa. Why are they the strongest people on the planet? These women, yes, 80% of the farmers are women. They work day in and day out on the farm, with babies on their backs and hand tools to grow all the food the family needs for an entire year. They face harsh conditions, drought, rising temperature, pests, diseases. There's no backup plan. If the crops fail, the family is going to endure a very long hunger season. One of the major pests that these farmers face are white flies. White flies, with the Latin name Bamesia tabaci, are the world's most devastating insect pests. They have a global distribution, they transmit plant viruses, become insecticide resistant, they all look alike, ultimately causing billions of dollars in damage each year. So the white flies use their stylet, or modified mouth part, to feed on the leaves of over 600 plants. It's during this feeding that the white flies transmit the viruses from the white fly to the plant. Much like when a mosquito feeds on us, they transmit a malarial parasite. So of the 600 plants that these white flies feed on, arguably the most important is cassava, as seen here with my friend Dr. Donald Kachigamba. Cassava leaves and roots are eaten by millions of people in South America, Southeast Asia, and many countries in Africa. In fact, many of you have even seen or eaten cassava, as it makes up the small balls in bubble tea, and is also the main ingredient in tapioca pudding. But for many in East Africa, it's a staple food. In fact, 800 million people rely on cassava for their daily calories. 800 million. You see, cassava is a poverty fighter. If a small-scale family farmer has healthy cassava, they can feed their family, and they have enough to sell at the market to generate income for important things like school fees, medical expenses, and savings. But cassava is under attack in East Africa by white flies. White flies are transmitting two devastating viruses, cassava mosaic disease and cassava brown streak disease. So the viruses, coupled with the white fly feeding, kill the plant and also destroy the roots, as you see there, by the brown rotten tissue, deeming them inedible. If there's no cassava, there's no food or income for millions of people in East Africa. This became apparent to me on my first trip to Kenya, sitting on this bus with scientists. We were traveling from one smallholder farm to the next, and on the highway, we came upon an accident. And I noticed everybody on the bus getting very quiet. And then I looked over my left shoulder, and I saw that a flatbed truck had crashed into a ditch, and all of the contents on the back of the truck were spilled into the ditch. I also noticed that there were armed guards standing on top of the contents, and I saw 200 men standing at the top of the ditch, looking down and pushing forward towards the contents. And it was like an armored car had tipped over and there was money lying in the ditch. So I turned to my colleagues on the bus and I said, what is it that everybody wants so desperately? And they turned to me and said, fertilizer. 
No further explanation was needed, because you see, if those men could get a bag of fertilizer and take it back to the farm, it could mean that their family would go from no meals a day to one, two, or three. And it was in on this bus in that moment that I went, "I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm here to use everything I have to help save the cassava." And so. I joined this global team of white fly fighters, and three of my colleagues are in the audience here today. So this is really, really special for me to be up here. But here's the rest of the team, and our sole focus is to increase cassava production for the strongest women on the planet, those smallholder farmers in East Africa. And so, what is my role on this team? My role on the team is to use genomics. Phylogenetics and supercomputing to study the speciation of white flies. So, as I said in the beginning, all the white flies around the world they all look alike. So, the only way we can tell them apart is to use genetics. And so, we take individual white flies and we isolate their DNA, and then we need to look for patterns of, to put them together. So, we use a supercomputer, which is actually here in Perth, called Magnus. And this supercomputer generates a phylogenetic tree. So phylogenetic trees can be interpreted much like family trees. Lines touching indicate more closely related individuals. So this diagram shows that there are 34 species of white flies around the world, which means that we need to protect cassava from more than one enemy. And the speciation information is also passed to the breeders and other scientists to ensure that we give the farmers in East Africa cassava that's resistant to the correct species of whitefly and the correct species of virus. But the thing is, generating those phylogenetic trees is intense. So if we have 10 samples, this is how many possible phylogenetic trees there are, and we have. Thousands. So you can see that we need supercomputing to figure out the best possible solution. But the problem here now is that my colleagues in East Africa are having to bring all of their data and sometimes their genetic material to our lab and to work here with colleagues, which is fantastic. I love it. But in reality, the clock is ticking in East Africa. The viruses are spreading. The white flies are spreading. And it really slows down the progress of actually controlling the white flies and the viruses. So, a clear solution is that we need to increase the computational biology capacity in East Africa, and a really good place to start is here in Professor Lobobi Livingstone's Applied Mathematics Group at Makerere University in Uganda. These young mathematicians need opportunities. In addition, we need DNA sequencing tents, just like were deployed in West Africa to study Ebola. We need those technologies and those sequencing tents on the ground in East Africa, so that we can prevent the spread of the white flies and we can prevent the spread of the viruses, just like was done for Ebola. Luckily, we have regional molecular labs in these countries. Thanks to Dr. Joseph Nunguru's virus diagnostic team, we also need to make sure that all of this genetic data that we're collecting is open source. So, at the University of Western Australia, we're developing Whitefly Base, which is going to take all of the data, the speciation data, and put it in an open source place, so that all of our colleagues all around the world have access to this data. So we need computational biology capacity in East Africa. We need those mobile sequencing tents and computers, not only to handle cassava and viruses, but we have to empower the scientists and the people of East Africa to be able to handle their own outbreaks before it becomes an outbreak. So there you have it. I was born to study one vegetable. <laughs> Now, granted. This one vegetable is the key thing for 800 million people's survival. So, if we're going to save the cassava, it's going to take all of us, not just the agricultural sector. 
It's going to take social media gurus, tweet people. It's going to take producers. It's going to take supercomputing experts and networking people and mathematicians and statisticians and database developers and even computational biologists like myself. I challenge all of you to continue searching for why you were born. And in the meantime, use your skills for meaningful things like saving the cassava or giving a voice to the voiceless. And in those moments, you'll find why you were born, just like I did the day on that bus in Kenya. Thank you.